the game is the game. You know, it's always about who you can fuck over. If you can, if you can betray and fuck over millions of people, then you can get whatever you want, man. Just like The Wire, you know, uh, it's it's a very interesting show. You know, it kind of teaches you a lot. You know, there's the political bureaucracy, there's the gang bureaucracy, and then there's the police bureaucracy. The police, all they care about, all the police care about is clearing cases. That's it. All the gangs care about is getting money and dominance over territory. And who controls the corners. And when you're a character like Stringer Bell, you know, he's he's more of the, you know, it's like yin and yang. Uh, Stringer Bell is the businessman and he's the logical guy. And he kind of helps balance out Avon's ruthlessness. So they're a very good pair. They work well together, you know. Um, man, uh, it's interesting. The show, I mean, Clay Davis... That's 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 a dirty ass motherfucking senator, you know. But he's playing the game. The game is the game. The rules don't the rules don't change. The players change. The game stays the same always. Doesn't matter what it is, you know. It's like everybody's everybody every fucking body is operating under the veil of democracy, under the veil of fairness, acting fair, treating everybody fair. But in reality, the truth the reality couldn't be further from the truth, man. Nobody's treating nobody fair. And, and, you know, it's bullshit. It's just, a, it's just a, you see, a, there's like a glit, there's, there's a surface that's glittery and looks nice. But under the surface, there's a hotbed of lies, deceit, betrayal, backstabbing, tricking this motherfucker, scamming him, getting over on that motherfucker. Did you guys see when he was in the courtroom and they had him dead to rights, Clay Davis? Because he was a corrupt official, you know? They had him dead to rights. But he pulled he, he pulled the wool over the entire audience. And he pulled the wool over the prosecutor. At the end of the clip, the motherfucker was... <laughs> Clay Davis, man. That motherfucker was slimy in a motherfucker. You know, you know, the saying goes, he's a crook, but he's our crook. He's my crook. You know, uh... Man, I mean, the stuff, the stuff is like, wow. Oh, you know, the game is the game, man. It doesn't change. It never changes. It's the game. The game's the game. You either play the game or get played. <laughs> Just like uh, Omar. You know, Omar, Omar has values. You know, he has a code. A man has to live by a code. And he lives by that code. We hadden natuurlijk een hele rit met We hebben een fucking eye on this shit. But the code, the, the game is the game. You know, uh, he doesn't target civilians. You know when you're in a drug game, there's no rules when you're selling drugs and dropping bodies left, right, and center. There's no rules to that shit. There's, li there's, there's no rules to that, man. There's no rules to that shit, bro. There's, there's, there's no rules to it, man. There's no loyalty in that game. It's just ruthlessness. It's about who you can fuck over because if you're a drug dealer, there's no way you're going to be able to go to the cops because you're a drug dealer. You're selling drugs, dude. If you get robbed, you got to get your pistol and go after that motherfucker that robbed you. But you know, the thing is, yeah, it, it, it comes back to you in all walks of life. You can use the principles... Of the 48 laws of power in every walk of life. If you're working, if, at your job, you can use it at your job. Shit. Anywhere. Anywhere. With your relationship. Your job. At anywhere, dude. Like, any fucking where. On YouTube. <laughs> the game is the game. Don't be mad at the game. Don't even be mad at the players of the game. <laughs> Man, this shit is crazy. The whole show is like predicated on who can I lie to, who can I steal from, who can I trick. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all a game.
It's all a game. It's all a game, man. You know, I, you know, Omar, why was Omar loved so much in the game? Why, why was he liked so much by the audience? I think it's because he had a code and he stuck by the... Shit, this shit's too honest. He had a code and he stuck by that code. No, he didn't kill anybody outside the game, but he was always robbing drug dealers for money. You know? Robbing stash houses. And, and, and when his grandma got shot up on the Sunday morning, her hat got shot up. He went after Avon Barksdale and that other dude, what's his name? String a bell, right? String a bell. <laughs> String a bell. You know, uh, I would recommend everybody watch The Wire, man. You know, because it's a great show, you know? And people tell me, oh, it's... No, nobody tells me. I read this on the comment section. But motherfuckers in the comment section always say that it's, it's all a game. It's all based on real life. It's based on Baltimore and the drug trade, man. It's about the drug dealers and the politicians and the police. The politicians run the police. The police commissioner gets appointed by the mayor. And then the commissioner has stats that he has to follow. Like, he has... All they care about is the case. And then after that case is over, the next case. <laughs> you know, it's one case after the other. That's all that matters. All they care about is clearing the case. Because that's what they get paid to do. That's their job. Man, I'm really not that good at this shit, man. Uh, season one was about... What was season one about again for The Wire? Season one was really just building up the character, right? Building up the characters, introducing us to all the different characters. D'Angelo Barksdale... Man, D'Angelo Boxdale, Boxdale's death really, like, screw, screwed with me, man. Like, for real. That dude died even though he didn't even snitch. He didn't even snitch, dude. He didn't even snitch. He, did, he, he didn't... Well, the reason they killed him... Was it because he was thinking about snitching? No, that wasn't because of... That wasn't why they killed him. I guess they killed him because he, he knew too much. Well... Of course he knew too much, he was part of the game. I mean, they could easily replace him though. Slim Charles could take me. You know, I mean, D'Angelo was never built for the game though. He was just born into the game. He was never, he never liked the game. He was just part of it because he was born into it. His dad, I believe his dad was a real gangster in the game. And apparently he's somehow related to Weebay as well. No, he's not. He's not related to Weebay. Weebay's a different character. And he, yeah, he, his dad was the real gangster. His dad was in jail, paid his dues. And then Avon, his mom, Brianna, she was part of the game. But man, that was really sad though. Brianna died. No, she didn't die. What am I talking about? Brianna didn't give a fuck about her own child. She was the worst parent ever, man. You know, uh, she cared more about the game than her child. She cared more about the game than her child. Man, this shit is crazy. You know, the amount of corruption, lies, thievery, just straight bullshit. Deception, betrayal, lie after lie, and bullshit after bull. Levy, that dude is the scheming gaming two-bit lawyer I've ever seen in my life. But that motherfucker knows what he's doing. He knows he's going to get paid regardless. He has billable hours. That's all he cares about. How many hours these motherfuckers going to pay him. All he cares about is his billable hours, man. That motherfucker don't give a fuck about anything else. And he's part of the... Well, he's not really part of the game. He's a lawyer, right? <sighs> man... Dudes like Barksdale. Barksdale is the ruthless one. And D'Angelo didn't want to be the ball of the game. Wallace got out the game, but they killed him because he was going to snitch. Damn. Damn. Cheese. That dude, that dude talked too much. Had a big mouth. Had to go. 
Too stupid.